Hello everybody and welcome in. Today we are going to be going over the particle accelerator for the black hole. In the last video we did the particle accelerator for that first section of the tier 5 Hyperion here on Stoneblock 4 and it went pretty well with the plutonium pellet and you guys seem to really like it. We did get some tips on how to improve the setup and we've also done a lot as we went moved into the black hole territory and as you can see as we moved into the end game. So today's setup is going to be nice and compact. We're just going to do it in this little ring right here, thanks to the magnetic field. One thing to note before you get started building and going over what you're going to need, it does take a lot of power. This single quantum entanglement porter is attached to my power generation up here, which currently does have plenty of power inside of it. It is not really enough if I'm going to be doing it a lot, but it will run this system as it is right now with this setup to 27,000 joules, which you don't need to go that high. So there's no issues as long as you're here doing it yourself. So for this build today, you are going to need two particle accelerators. You're going to need the linear motors. I use four of them myself. You can use more if you want it to go faster or less if you want to conserve on your power. The thing to note is the faster that the particle is traveling, the more power it's going to take to push it faster and faster and faster. So the more of these you put, the more power draw you are going to end up with. Next up, you're going to need guide rings. You're going to need 14 guide rings and one accelerator sensor. I use the accelerator sensor, even though I'm not going to be automating it right now. I like to have it there anyways. You could swap this out easily for another guide ring or for another accelerator motor, and there would be no problem at all. After that, you are going to need the magnetic field from Oritech Things. This is a beautiful device that is going to let us keep it into this little tiny circle instead of having such a big circle that we had last time. Again, the downside to this is it's going to take a lot of power. So again, we're going to be using the quantum entanglement border, and our delivery method is alternate universal cables. I choose this because I can also just stack more cables and generate my own little battery source over here outside of my normal power uh, transfer. So that is why I use this system. You are going to need two add-on extenders. This magnetic field will only take two extenders, so that is what you're going to be using. Now with the extender, you have several options, but these are the ones that I use right here, these little section right here. We have the capacitor add-on. I bought the tier nine. I have three of those from the store. We have three tier nine efficiency add-ons, and we have two of the tier nine acceptor add-ons. You don't need the tier nine acceptor add-ons. You can just use the regular acceptor add-ons. And in fact, I prefer the regular acceptor add-ons because it lets you actually plug pipes in, whereas the acceptor tier nine does not let you plug any cabling into it, but this one does. And that's gonna give you extra ability to pump power back into your magnetic field. So now that we have that set up here, we are gonna go ahead and move on to the actual construction, and I'll show you guys how I have set it up. So we have the particle accelerator right here along with the one ring right there. And then on the sides of this, we are going to have the accelerator motors hooked up right there. And right here next to this, we're gonna put the other particle accelerator ring where we'll drop in the second particle once we're up to speed. I manually do this right now because quite frankly, there's not enough things you need to create that is going to warrant you having uh, more of them, since the conversion of antimatter to stable antimatter is one antimatter to 64 stable. Uh, so I haven't found a real reason to automate this yet. So we're just gonna go around the ring here. And of course right here is where I would put the sensor, but you can put another speed or just another ring right here. Um, that is just personal preference, just in case later on I wanna add it in. I don't have to worry about changing anything. So, pretty easy setup right there. Nothing uh, special about that at all. Next, we're going to move in 
to actually setting up the magnetic field. The magnetic field needs to be on the same level as the actual ring. So we're gonna go right here and toss that guy down. And it is ready to go. Now you do need to uh, link it to this device over here. So we're just gonna grab our advanced uh, targeting designator, which you will have to craft in order to use this. And you are just going to right click on there, just like you would for uh, doing the, the crystals. And then you can click on here, and now that is going to be linked to this. Now that we have that going, we can come through here and grab the extensions or the extenders. And you can throw these on in whatever fashion you want. Now, you don't need to use this many of them. Uh, I prefer to just do what I have. And I really prefer to use the efficiency add-ons over anything else, because I'd like to save myself uh, the necessity of having additional power. And like I said, you can use these tier nine ones, but the power connectors, the power cables that I have, uh, they do not connect to them at all. So as you can see there, they do not connect. However, if you go through and you use just the regular ones, like so, the power connectors do actually connect up to them. Now this magnetic accelerate, this magnetic uh, field can take power from all sides. So I take advantage of that just to make sure that the power can actually get into everything. And then same thing with right here. I do it on that side as well. And there we go. Everything is connected up. And we are ready to bring the power out over to our quantum entangle porter. There we go. We are connected up to our quantum entangle porter. Now, the reason why I like to use these cables as well is because now I can just come up here like so. And it's not the nicest looking thing in the world, but with more cables, you now increase your, not only your throughput, right, mechanism, but you're also increasing uh, your storage space so that you don't have to worry about transferring power from your battery. You'll actually have enough power stored up here for almost your entire usage uh, scenario for this. So let's just go ahead and build that out real fast. So it's not the nicest looking thing, right? But now you can see that we have plenty of additional battery power going on right here. We have 314 million FE just sitting up here now, ready to go. And now if we come back, your wiring for your uh, accelerators, All right, now that we have the whole system built and ready to go, let's go ahead and create a black hole just to confirm that everything is working properly. Particles going around. We have all the speed accelerators hooked up to power. There is our black hole. So yeah, guys, I hope this video has helped you out. If you have any other questions for Stone Block 4, or if you want to see how this derpy frog does something that you might not have thought about, go ahead and hit me down in the comments below about something you would like to see in Stone Block 4. As you can see, we've gotten all the way down and we're into Ascension right now. I'm not 100% sure I'm going to do this stuff, uh, it's just creative stuff. I'm not sure if I want to bother with all of this. But anything up through here, I'll be glad to show you guys. And you can see how I do it. Maybe you can critique my, my silly methods. <laughs> Until next time, bye-bye.